Welcome to the Summer in 7 series, where I answer one subscriber's question in seven minutes or less. If you want the answers to even more FAQs about moving to Mexico, head to the description below and check out the completely free, completely updated Move to Mexico Quick Start Guide. This video focuses on shipping your belongings to Mexico, what the process is, how much it costs, and what you can and can't ship to Mexico. If you're traveling to Mexico by plane, then you don't need to worry about any of the requirements like bringing an inventory list. Just make sure that all the items are used. And what that means is that they are removed from their original packaging. I once brought a new keyboard with me to Mexico back from the US and I made the mistake of packing it in the original box. The customs agent wanted to charge me an import fee until I was ultimately able to convince him that it was just for personal use, which it was. Subscribers who have driven their belongings across the border in a personal vehicle have told me that they recommend packing everything in see-through containers to make a vehicle inspection less likely. They also recommend having an inventory list in Spanish, even though in most cases officials will just give that a passing glance. How do I move my belongings to Mexico? On the recommendation of a subscriber, I spoke with Dulce Araujo of ReMove. The most important thing that you need to know about shipping your belongings to Mexico is that you need to have either your temporary or permanent residency card. Some sources might tell you that you can ship your belongings to Mexico with just your visa and your NUT authorization. That's your unique processing number. However, according to Dulce, if there is any type of delay in getting your residency card, it's known to happen. Any type of delay could mean that your belongings are stuck in customs and there are very, very expensive storage fees for that. Furthermore, she told me that some aduanas, customs, won't release your belongings with just your visa and your NUT authorization. They want to see that residency card. The bottom line here is that you should plan on going to Mexico before your belongings to finish the residency process, to finish the canje portion and get your residency card. Now, temporary and permanent residents have a slightly different process for shipping their belongings to Mexico. Permanent residents must apply for a menaje de casa. What is a menaje de casa? The menaje de casa is an inventory list in Spanish approved and notarized by the Mexican consulate in your country of origin. So wherever you got your visa. It should be obtained within three months of getting your residency visa. And once you have it, it's valid for six months. Some consulates have granted permanent residents the menaje de casa outside of that time frame. So remember, it doesn't hurt to ask. But if you're in the process of applying for your visa and you are going to be a permanent resident who needs one of these notarized inventory lists, then be sure to ask about it at your visa interview. Temporary residents, according to Dulce, don't need a menaje de casa. Instead, what you'll need is a letter in Spanish promising that you will take with you all the items that you are now importing. You'll take them with you when you leave Mexico once your temporary residency expires. Both temporary and permanent residents will need to provide an inventory list in Spanish as well as a letter addressed to the Mexican customs house at your particular point of entry declaring that all the items in the shipment are used and that there are no prohibited items in the shipment. If you decide to work with Dulce and the Remove Mexico team, then they will provide you with the necessary customs letter prior to your shipment's arrival at the Mexican port of entry. Dulce recommends getting in touch with her three to six months prior to your move to Mexico. How much does it cost to ship your stuff to Mexico? Shipping personal items to Mexico is expensive. In fact, one subscriber told me that the quote she got to ship a pallet of boxes from the US to Mexico was more expensive than the quote she got for the same pallet, the same amount of stuff to ship that to Europe. Another subscriber graciously shared her experience moving personal items from Oregon to Puerto Vallarta. She's using U-Haul International to ship three U-Box containers. Each box can hold up to 2,000 pounds, which is roughly one room of furniture. The estimated cost to ship the three boxes from Oregon to Puerto Vallarta was 11,500 US dollars. According to the subscriber, other estimates that she got were closer to $25,000. 
Tip. To keep your move to Mexico feasible, downsizing is going to be essential. When you're choosing what to bring to Mexico, remember that most of the household items that you can get in the US, you can also get in Mexico. Of course, if you are super loyal to a particular brand that would need to be imported from the US into Mexico, you might wanna take some time to do some price comparisons on Amazon Mexico. For common electronics like TVs though, I wouldn't worry about bringing mine from the US. There is a wide variety of TVs available in Mexico and you can generally score some good deals. What is prohibited to ship to Mexico? Dulce from Remove was kind enough to send me the exact list that she shares with her clients of all the prohibited items. I'm going to put it up on the screen here in just a second so you can pause the video to take a look. Before you ask, just because it's not recommended to ship items like jewelry, supplements, perfume, medication, that doesn't mean you can't bring it with you to Mexico. Just means don't have it in your shipment, carry it with you as part of your personal luggage. If you have any questions about moving your personal belongings to Mexico, or you'd like to submit a question for the Summer in 7 series, please feel free to do so in the comments below. I'm Alex from BackpackingBrunette.com. Thanks for watching.